Good evening, brethren. Welcome back. Thursday night at the right. We are honored to have with us tonight illustrious brother Mark Campbell in our ongoing series, Five Questions with a White Hat. Doesn't seem like enough questions. Mark, you've had such a long and illustrious career in the, all of the Masonic bodies. It's hard to know where to begin. I'd like to start out by asking, what led you initially to join the Scottish Rite, and, and what, what did that timeline look like? I uh, originally joined Richfield Lodge in uh, 1988, and when I joined the Blue Lodge, as I looked around, everybody in my lodge was a member of the Scottish Rite. And so it was sort of a natural uh, progression, if you will, to, to move into the Scottish Rite. At the time, I was uh, in kind of a high-pressure job with a lot of travel, and so I couldn't take the degrees that we offer here, the 29 degrees, on a weekly basis. So I was in a one-day class in May of 1989. And uh, uh, so from the one-day class until the time I rehired for, retired from my uh, job. I think I missed three Thursday nights. It was wow. uh, once you got in and it became an important thing, you figured out a way to manage your time so you could be here on Thursday nights. Mm -hmm. um, as, as I believe you know, I've been on the sound committee all those years. Uh, so the sound committee is one of the committees where you have to be here every week. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so I managed to do it. And it not only sound committee, but Lodge of Perfection on top of that. Yeah, yeah. The, um, I was the Venerable Master of the Lodge of Perfection in 2000 and 2001. So, um, and of course that, at that time was a 12 year line, but I jumped in one up because one of the guys had to, had to drop out. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I was only 10 years in my progression with the uh, Lodge of Perfection line. And uh, that was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. We, uh, uh, the Lodge of Perfection is a, a Mason's introduction to the Scottish Rite, and you kind of got to do it right in order to give them a good foundation for what comes after. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a, it, it was fun to do, and it was fun to finish. Fantastic. Now, on top of all of that, you were the secretary of the Scottish Rite for, I believe, around eight years. That had to have been a full-time job in I and was, of itself. I was the... Uh, I retired from my career with the federal government in 2007. And when I retired, I had about six months worth of things to do around the house. So those initial retirement uh, uh, months were taken up finishing all the things that you put off. And uh, just about the time that uh, uh, I was starting to think about what am I going to do next, uh, Jerry Oliver, who was the Sovereign Grand Inspector General at the time, uh, came to me and, and asked if I would take the position as the Secretary of the Scottish Rite, which is uh, technically a half-time position but when you're at the Scottish Rite, it does tend to take up more time than that. So uh, for about eight years, I, uh, I was the secretary at the Rite until uh, my wife decided to retire. And then we both retired. We see how that works. Now, on a side note, secretary of the Scottish Rite, you have a brother that we know quite well who is the Grand Lodge secretary did, uh, did you show him how it's done, or does he like to think that he taught you everything you know? He, well, he will tell you that he taught me everything I know. In fact, uh, Douglas, right worshipful brother Douglas Campbell, uh, became a Mason in 1980, eight years before I did. And in fact, he raised me in Richfield Lodge. He was the master in 1988. And uh, Doug became the uh, uh, Grand Lodge Grand Secretary uh, about 25 years ago and uh, um, did a, a pretty good job over those years. His, his uh, um, 
departure left a big hole for them to fill. Mm, definitely. Well, and here we are interviewing you and talking about your brother, but you two sort of, you really do go hand in hand in some, <laughs> some ways. Yeah, we, we, have, we have traveled Masonic paths together over the years. Doug was the uh, uh, custodian for Southeast Minnesota for a time and Southwest Minnesota for a time. And uh, he lived in Minneapolis and I lived in Bloomington, so when he had to go out in the evening, he always wanted somebody to go with him so he wasn't driving alone at midnight. And uh, so we, we truly traveled the Masonic paths together. What is your favorite Masonic memory? And it can be any, any Masonic body, any rite. What's the first thing you think of? I think it's, it's not a secret that in Masonry you are sometimes asked to memorize material. When I joined the Blue Lodge, I uh, uh, was, of course, asked to memorize some material in order to progress from the first degree to the second degree. When I heard the material for the first time, it was a deja vu situation. When I was a child, eight, nine years old, my father was a Mason, having joined the Lodge in 1953. He and several of his buddies were part of a degree team, and uh, they would travel around and, and uh, uh, do things, uh, mostly third degrees, but uh, train new Masons and work with them on their proficiency lectures. So when I heard all this material, it took me back to when I was eight or nine years old in the back seat of the car while my dad's talking to one of his buddies in the front seat and they're going through all this material. Um, so I found it pretty easy to recall those memories and, and uh, therefore accomplish my proficiencies without uh, too much effort. I would also add though that uh, when I was in the chairs at Richfield Lodge, I had the good fortune or misfortune of having two custodians of the work in the lodge. My brother Doug and Gary Bill, who was also, in fact, Gary was right in front of me in the line. Uh, Gary was a uh, custodian at a point in time when he had not yet been master. So uh, it, was, it was kind of an interesting situation. And uh, in Richfield Lodge, the uh, uh, custom was for the senior warden to do the entered apprentice degree. And the candidate was Gary Bill's son. So my first trip to the East was to initiate the chairman of the board of custodians' son, which again, put a little bit of pressure on you to, no, perform, no pressure. <laughs> to perform. Wow, that, that is, uh, and we all think we have experienced some sort of pressure memorization, but that is a whole different level. Yep, it, it, does, it does make it ring, ring home, ring <laughs> yes. true, yeah. Great memories. Well, illustrious brother, Mark Campbell, we really appreciate your time your stories and you are just a pillar of the masonic community thank, thank you. you so much for being with us tonight thank you